Well, folks, this is the next cigar box project. Um, it's a cigar box three string guitar. I'll just give you some of the particulars of it. It's uh, made from a futon frame. The neck is some hardwood I got from my dear friends up at uh, Woodcraft. Standard fretting. The uh, sound holes are sink drains. It's a cigar box, 25 inch scale, and there's the hole. The hole is for the pickup. And I was going to install a standard cigar box pickup for a six string guitar, but it's a three string guitar. And a three string guitar means the strings aren't anywhere near any of the spacings from a conventional pickup. So I have to build the pickup. If I have to build the pickup, I have to build a pickup winder. And that's the major portion of the story. We'll talk about that next. So I'm documenting some of my progress on my first attempt at something practical with the Arduino. Uh, well, not the first practical thing, but something practical from a musical point of view. I'm making a pickup winder, and I'm following a lot of uh, help from the folks out on the web. Uh, what you're looking at here is a tachometer board. So that there is a photodiode, phototransistor pair in reflective mode. It's set up to produce a voltage somewhere between 4 and 5 volts when it's reflecting and somewhere near zero when it's not. And to ensure that that's going to be digital, this is a op amp wired up as a Schmidt trigger to drive the voltage hard high and hard low. Uh, this is a test rig. It's actually going to end up being the carcass of the pickup winder. Um, what will end up happening is that this disc which is just a CD mounted on a pulley with epoxy with a black flag. You can see the flag spinning around. That will be what interrupts the tachometer and gives me the rotational speed. Ultimately, this motor from a DC drill will end up being what drives the motor shaft and that will be tied into that Arduino with a pulse width modulator and a whomping big transistor to drive the motor and an old ATX power supply to um, provide the 12 volts to the motor and uh, I'll show you the setup in a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so the board is now positioned with some double sticky tape temporarily pointing at the sensor and you can see that the flag goes in front of it uh, panning to the oscilloscope now. Watch as we there you go. Pulse, pulse. So you get a zero volt when we're in the silver region, and then as we go past the black region, we get a high going pulse. Okay, now I've hooked up the hand drill to the shaft, and you can see. Hi there. This is uh, the next in a series of videos about my attempt at building a home-built pickup winder. Uh, down here in the basement shop, that's the dryer going behind me. It's a multi-purpose shop. Um, first step was I had to build a power supply since I wasn't going to drive this with the original battery from a drill. And 9 volt batteries burn up pretty quick. So what this is is a power supply, an ATX power supply that based on lots of those little instructions on the web I converted to a lab power supply so it's ground plus 12, plus 5, and plus 3.3 little power switch turn on and off there is the main pa mains power on the back corner you can't see works very nicely, continues, delivers continuous power enough to drive the motors and in theory to drive the, the logic boards uh, the logic boards on this or board at this point, there are two this little board I described in the previous video is a reflective photo sensor with a Schmidt trigger. Sends out its signal on that orange line, green and black are its ground and power. The sensor uses the black stripe on that CD to uh, show a ro one rotation and it turns into both a tachometer and a rotation counter. The pickup will mount on that aluminum bar which is tied into that quarter inch shaft and the quarter inch shaft's tied to the CD 
and through a coupling to a DC motor, uh, which by itself actually spins too fast. And so ultimately I will replace the DC drill motor, which is being gently held by that bench clamp, simply to keep it from spinning while I test it. In fact, all I did for this test was to, rather than taking out the DC motor, clamp it onto the other end of the motor shaft. So what controls all this is the Arduino. It sends out pulse mod modulation with signals uh, out that yellow line. Actually, that's not true. It sends pulse mod modulation signals out to that black line you see in the middle and there's a LED for test purposes. There's a potentiometer you see in the middle running power on that orange line off to the Arduino which gives it essentially a control signal to adjust the speed and the pulse width modulation signal both goes to the LED but also heads over it also heads over to the uh, MOSFET that came out of the drill on a heat sink and power and diode to keep the back voltage from when it turns off from killing the uh, electronics and then the, the way that I test the speed is this ohmmeter which has a velocity mode so let's get the whole thing fired up and we'll see how I did okay so the Arduino's on the 12 volt power supplies on and I'll start to dial up the speed with that pot You can hear the whine of the pulse width modulation in the drill motor, and when we get up to an appropriate voltage, the whole thing spins. You can see the pulse width counter, or if you the rotation counter running, and the bar spinning at a moderate rate. We look at the near at about three hertz. And I can slow it down. To about one and a half hertz to a half hertz not real stable but probably at this speed you don't want we really need a lot of stability you just need a place where you can get the wiring started uh, if you touch the heat sink it's a little warm at this point we're getting about one rotation per second now i can crank it up And again, you can see the whole apparatus. The DC motor is passive at this point. It's just along for the ride. The coupling, the tachometer, and the output side, which is where the pickup will get set. And then, once again, if we crank it all the way up, and you can see the LED is slayed to it. On top speed, it's about nine and a half hertz, so 600 revolutions per minute. It should be more than adequate to pick up on them. So, next step is to crank it down. So, next step is to take off the DC motor, make a mount for the drill motor, because I think that's how it's going to end up going. A uh, little metal bar there is to have the wire feed off smoothly. And I think it's time to wind pickups. See you later.